three counts. That's right. That's right. So in the United States, there are 51 million people with IQs under 85, and there are about 43 million people living in poverty. Do you think those Venn diagrams intersect? Yeah. Well, we should also be clear about this because it is so politically suspect is that it's not like it's 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 self-evident that people who have less cognitive capability are likely to end up poor because there are serious complex problems in life that beset them that they have a difficult time dealing with and they can't learn as quickly. And so the relationship between poverty and intelligence is self-evident if you're willing to think it through for any length of time. It doesn't mean that everybody who's rich that is, it doesn't mean that everyone who is rich is smart, and it doesn't mean that everyone who is poor is stupid, what it, to, to be blunt. But what it does mean is that if you're intelligent, you're much more likely to become financially successful. And I think it was the Herrnstein, Herrnstein and Murray, I think, did the calculations back in the bell curve that indicated that if you imagine that you could, you were a fairy godmother and, and you have a your newborn grandchild in front of you and you can grant them three standard deviations above the mean um, in terms of wealth at birth, or you can grant them three standard deviations above the mean in terms of IQ at birth, and then you wanted to determine which would work better for them by the time they were 40, and the answer to that was quite clear, is that IQ trumps wealth. Right. If it's ability to predict a positive future. So. Yes. Yeah. And that, that's why I'm so interested in the concept of increasing IQ or increasing the, the, the G factor, not just the IQ score, but really what under this reasoning ability. So, you know, some people have tried to teach college students critical thinking. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. It you is. Can, if you you're can smart and you can think critically, so much the better. Exactly, you know, and you know, it may sound to your listeners, I just want to take a, a moment out here, it may sound to your listeners like, here are these two guys pontificating about what it's like to be smart, what it's like to be not so smart. I mean, the point of this, the point of neuroscience research on intelligence, and what I hope to achieve by writing the book, was to show that, that the genetic aspects are not deterministic. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite. Mm. Genes are probabilistic. So the extent to which something like intelligence is genetic, in my view, is the extent to which we'll learn how to change it for, for, for the better. Right. Well, that's definitely, yeah, because people do tend to think about biological factors as deterministic, and that, that's a mistake because they, 